I've had my poll set up in my home for one year now. Let's check in on my progress. Let's have an air walk to start us off since I finally got it back after not being able to do it correctly for a few months there. In this video, you'll see some new moves, some old familiar moves, some combos, some successes, and some not so successes. So basically every video of mine. <laughs> it's hard to believe we're finally at a year of pole progress. Here are a bunch of new Jasmine knee hold based moves for you to enjoy. I have no idea what these first two are called. As always, we've got some beauty and grace and some um, less than graceful moments. But yeah, the majority of my pole practice is these less than graceful moments. So <laughs> that's nothing new. This here is the Marley, and I think if you do it higher up, it might be considered an advanced move. It's certainly spooky to think about being more than a couple inches off the ground while holding on solely with a knee pit and a prayer. <laughs> and yes, that was maybe my knee or an ankle making its displeasure known. But I should note that I am doing very, very few advanced moves at this stage. I'm pretty firmly in the intermediate category, which I think is probably normal for about a year of home pole experience. So don't think that I'm trying to do these crazy advanced moves to prove to you guys that I've reached some sort of level or something. And I've been at this for a year, but some things are still inconsistent. Sometimes even basic spins don't go to plan. And again, that's normal. Hey, but check it out. I've been working on my strength and I've been able to add some tough moves into my conditioning routine. Someday I'll be able to climb the pole just using my arms. I've seen people do it. I know it's possible. <laughs> And here's how the flag hold is looking. It's looking like me revolving to the worst angle. <laughs> I've also really been working on my flexibility, so I'm starting to barely be able to think about maybe doing full split moves someday. <laughs> it's really exciting that I was even able to mostly pull off this move today, although getting out of it is another story. And of course, one of the main lessons of this pole journey, when you find success on one side, the other side is not a guarantee. My floor work has also come a long way. I'm much more confident in my heels, my flow, and my sensuality. I mean, just look at her go. I'd like to thank Roz the Diva for teaching me this one over on Instagram. I should say, though, that a lot of my pole contemporaries have passed me by. Like, for example, a lot of my peers can do shoulder mounts and I- Um... <laughs> okay, well that was the first time that happened! <laughs> but anyway, many of my contemporaries who started their journey at the same time I did have left me in their dust, usually because they have the opportunity to train in a studio with an instructor. They're doing moves like shoulder mounts, aerial ballerinas, aerial inverts, and more, and I'm simply not there yet. And that's totally fine. My pole success is not dampened by the greater successes of others. I'll get there when I get there because I'm on my own journey.
Okay, back to the Kelsey of it all. I'm working on new ways into old moves, so here's me trying to get into a Superman from an apprentice. This was the first time I got it to work, <laughs> even a little, which is why you're seeing me react the way that I am. And remember, for every step in the right direction, there are like a hundred failed attempts. Even though I've been at this for a year, sometimes my brain simply stops working as soon as I touch the pole and I totally bail. <laughs> Something I've been working on is making those bales more beautiful and, um, safer. <laughs> so here you'll see me get into an almost Superman, bail out, and then catch myself back in a Jasmine instead of slamming right to the ground. Hooray! Progress! <laughs> If my inversions are looking better, that's because I've been following the advice in Poltato Gem's new video, but I'd just like to remind you all that this shit is hard. Even after a year of consistent training, it's not always a guarantee that an inversion will get me into the right spot, or even get me fully upside down. And I know you didn't think I'd given up on my sloppy danger slides as my favorite exit for every move. Here comes a beautiful example of how having a year of home pull experience does not make me a professional or an expert. This is also an example of why you should always use a mat. Oh. I'm alive. Oh. oh boy, I hope I was recording that. Anyway, I think we've seen just about all we need to see from today's training session. Let's throw it back to when it all began. Okay, what you're seeing is day one back at it on the pole. That's all. Sitting is, oh, it's so hard. It's so special that I can look at this footage that I shot during my first couple of weeks of pole training and see just how much stronger I've become. I've also learned how to film horizontally and actually be in the shot, but that's just icing on the cake. It hurt so badly and was so frustrating to get back on the pole in early 2021 after a full year off to rebuild the strength that I didn't want to believe I had lost. After every session, I was dizzy, bruised, and pretty much in tears. Am I a perfect pole dancer now that I've had a year of home pole experience? <laughs> of course not. It still hurts like hell, and I still mess up way more times than I get it right. I pretty much flatly refuse to do static pole, and I still bail out of moves ungracefully and unflatteringly. I still spend most of my time wiping my hands on my ass or grabbing more grip aid. But this is my beautiful, imperfect pole journey, and it's not stopping here. I'm so proud of myself for how far I've come and how far I'll go. And I'm so happy that you decided to tag along with me. I guess all that's left to say for now is bye!